Hi, in this video, we will go over AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner Cheat Sheet for Identity and Access Management. As per the exam content, we will specifically go over Domain 2 Security and Compliance and focus on 2.3 Identify AWS Access Management Capabilities. Now in this cheat sheet, we will go over five main topics. First, what is IAM and the definitions used in AWS Identity and Access Management. Second, we will cover the process of IAM authentication. Third, we will go over the security features of IAM for authentication. Fourth, we will cover the process of Identity Access Management Authorization. And finally, we will cover the security features of IAM for authorization. Now, starting on the definitions used in AWS Identity and Access Management. As you can see, there are various kind of definitions and terminologies used. There is AWS IAM Identities. There's AWS IAM Entities there is an IAM principle, and finally, AWS resources in your AWS account. We will go over these things in detail. First, what is Identity and Access Management? AWS Identity and Access Management is a web service that helps you securely control access to AWS resources. Why do you use Identity and Access Management? You use IAM to control who is authenticated, and authorized to use AWS resources. What is the root user? When you first create an AWS account, you begin with a single sign-in identity called the AWS root user that has complete access to all AWS services and resources in the account. The AWS root user signs in with the email address and password that was used to create the account. The root user creates the first IAM user. Once the first IAM user is created, ideally, the root user login should be rarely used due to the root user's ability to completely access every aspect of the AWS account. Now, what are roles. An IAM role is an IAM identity that you can create an account that has specific permissions. However, instead of being uniquely associated with one person, a role is intended to be assumable by anyone who needs it. A role does not have standard long-term credentials such as password or access keys associated with it. Instead, when you assume a role, it provides you with temporary security credentials for your role session. Who is an IAM principal? Principal is an IAM entity that can interact with AWS resources in your AWS account. A principal is a person or an application that can make a request for an action or an operation on an AWS resource. Who is an IAM entity? IAM entity is the one being authenticated by AWS as a principal. Only root user, IAM user, federated user, and assumed IAM role can be IAM entities. Groups are not an IAM entity, as a group is merely a collection of users, and IAM authenticates either the user or the role. Who is a federated user? A federated user represents employees in your organization who already have a way to be authenticated, such as by signing into your corporate network, or they sign in using external identity providers like Google or Microsoft. You don't have to create separate IAM users for them. Instead, you can federate those user identities into AWS. Now that we have covered the definitions of IAM, we will now 
quickly cover the process of IAM authentication. What is authentication? A principal must be authenticated using the credentials to send a request to AWS. An IAM principal can be a person or an application making a request for an action or operation to an AWS resource. The principal is authenticated as either the AWS account root user or an IAM entity, which could be either an IAM user, a federated user, or assumed rules. When the IAM user is a person, then you must authenticate with your email address and password. When the IAM user is an application and authenticating from API or CLI, command line interface, then you must provide your access key and secret key to access the AWS resources in your AWS account. Now, we will quickly cover some security features of identity and access management for authentication. First, multi-factor authentication. Why is MFA needed? AWS recommends that you configure multi-factor authentication to help protect your AWS resources for increased security. What is MFA? User is required to follow a two-factor authentication to access AWS website or resources in AWS account. First, the root user or IAM user must log in using login ID and credentials and then user must key in a valid code generated from either a virtual MFA device, UTF security key, or hardware MFA device. What is the benefit of MFA? MFA adds extra security because it requires users to provide unique authentication from an AWS supported MFA mechanism in addition to the regular sign-in credentials when they access AWS websites or services. Second security features of IAM for authentication is AWS Security Token Service. If you recall, an IAM rule does not have standard long-term credentials such as password or access keys associated with it. Instead, when you assume a role, it provides you with temporary security credentials for your role session. What is Security Token Service? You can use the AWS Security Token Service to create and provide trusted users with temporary security credentials that can control access to your AWS resources. What is the security benefit of, AWS, of STS, Security Token Service? Temporary security credentials are not stored with the user, but are generated dynamically and provided to the user when requested. When the temporary security credentials expire, the user can request new credentials as long as the user requesting them still has permissions to do so. Now we go over the second part of IAM, which is authorization. What is authorization? Authorization is the process of specifying exactly what actions a principal can perform on the resources in the AWS account. The steps involved in authorization are when a principal makes a request AWS evaluates policies, evaluates the policies that are attached to AWS identities. AWS checks in the request for the permissions in the policies to determine whether the request is allowed or denied. AWS uses value from the request context to check for policies that apply to the request. It then uses the policies to determine whether to allow or deny the request. The security features of IAM for authorization are, number one, what is a policy? A policy is an object in AWS when associated with an identity or resources defines the permission. How does a policy provide security during authorization? When an IAM principal, uh, user or role, makes a request, AWS evaluates the policies attached to the AWS identity 
or AWS resource and the permissions in the policies determine whether the request is allowed or denied. What is an identity-based policy? Identity-based policies grant permissions to IAM identities, which are the users, groups, or roles. Identity-based policies are either managed or inline policies to an identity. Managed policies. Standalone identity-based policies that you can attach to multiple users, groups, and roles in your AWS account. There are two types of managed policies. AWS managed policies are created and managed by AWS. Customer managed policies are those that you create and manage in your AWS account. Customer managed policies provide more precise control over your policies than AWS managed policies. Inline policies are policies that you add directly to a single user, group, or role. Inline policies maintain a strict one-to-one -one relationship between a policy and an identity. They are deleted when you delete the identity. What is a resource-based policy? You attach inline policies to resources. The most common example of resource-based policies are Amazon S3 bucket policies and IAM role trust policies. Resource-based policies are inline policies. There are no managed resource-based policies. And finally, resource-based policies allow cross-account access. So this concludes our cheat sheet for identity and access management. Please subscribe for, uh, to our videos for more exam and explanation videos. The next video will be the cheat sheet for billing and pricing. Thanks for watching.